Hello there. This is Being God to Be the Servant channel. And today's lesson, we're in chapters 75 through 77 in Psalms. It would have been 78, but uh, chapter 78 is going to be like 70-something verses by itself. So it's probably just going to be its own reading. I try to keep it to around 14 pages. But, you know, tonight's going to be a little shorter. Well, it's nighttime for me. I don't know when you're watching this, but it's nighttime when I do these recordings. Normally late at night when things are quiet and my dogs are asleep. But if you're new to this, it's a Bible study channel where I go through the Bible in order, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. I don't skip anything because God commands it. God says we're to teach all of the Word, not just part of the Word. This is a command to anybody teaching the Word, doing Bible studies, any preacher, deacon, bishop, any church out there. You're not to skip any part of the Word because, like I've already showed, even the things where you think there's boring areas there's also still teachings so i hope everyone's having a good week so far uh here in tennessee we're going back into a little bit of a drought but we're supposed to have rain come this weekend and so we got our hot you know the heat wave coming in and so but it has been a mild summer i do appreciate that because, you know, normally like for almost a whole month of August, it'd be, you know, 90s and triple digits and stuff. And it's been quite mild this summer. And so, but we are having a little warm week. But, you know, as I said, we're having a cool summer. I don't know if all of the country is, but I do know this part of it is. But... I will say uh, in the lesson tonight, chapter 77 is now one of my most favorite psalms. Uh, we get to it. I'm going to go ahead and say it front. It's been a lot that I've been dealing with lately. And I know a lot more people have been dealing with the exact same things. And so it's... Uh, I'm still just all eager with anticipation to get to it, to read it. <laughs> but we still have 75 and 76, which are short. we got 10 and then 12 verses. You know, not too long. All of these are, it says, a song or psalm of Asaph. We already talked about Asaph before. He was appointed by, uh, from what I read about, he was appointed by King David as a, a, a musician and it's like uh, a lot of these um, they got different names to them things I found in a different study Bible like chapter 75 says to the chief musician Al Tashchith a song or psalm of Asaph uh, 76 it says to the chief musician on uh Nejinoth, I think that uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. Nejinoth, a psalm or song of Asaph, and of course, seventy-seven says to the chief musician, to Jeduthun, or Jeduthun. Uh, kind of hard to say some of these names, but yeah, it's either. Jed Uthun or Jeduthun Jeduthun I don't know, whichever way it says a psalm of Asaph but yeah so all of these were by Asaph and uh, so of course if you're a musician you're going to be an artist you're going to write poetry or turn them into songs or but it doesn't matter who you are, when you serve the Lord, your talents will also will bring forth fruits of the Lord. So always remember that as well. You know, we are all given God-given talents. 
and we're to start using them for the Lord. It's like for me, I'm a builder, mechanic, you know, some of my natural talents, humanitarian. That's what the career scope test always said. And so I still use those now to help neighbors and other people in need as much as I can. I normally never, you know, unless I have to spend money out of my pocket to get parts or supplies or tools, I normally don't charge nothing because as of right now, I'm being provided for with, you know, my, you know, military retirement. But, you know, not everybody is as blessed to, as I am in that in that area. And it's, uh, the sad thing is in today's time, it's getting worse trying to make ends meet. But, you know, my life wasn't uh, cupcakes and rainbows. My parents' life was easier than mine. My life, in some ways, will be easier than most today. And when you go back, kind of uh, before the Great Depression and after the Great Depression, life was easier, minus the Great Depression. And what happened right before the Great Depression was the swing era. And that was bringing on more idolatry, more sins, and we were punished for those things. You know, 1920, women were given, given the right to vote, so mankind told God, kiss off. That's part of the swing era. Women started living very seductive, uh, flat out just whorish lifestyles. Not all, but a lot of them were, especially in the big cities. Cities started being known as cesspools, stuff like that. But, you know, during the Great Depression, the hard times brought people back to the Lord. And it worked. God's done this numerous times. He's done it to the Israelites. And he'll do it to us. He'll do it to the whole world. Whatever it takes to bring us back to him. And so... Each time, though, mankind gets more and more resilient on how to go against God and then his punishments not affect them as much. But, you know, from my era, you know, you had the hippie movement. Because from the Great Depression up to the 1960s, women started going back, obeying God. Men were doing the same and stuff. And somewhere along the line, that's when rock and roll started coming out. Then the rebellious era started. And those rebellious people gave, you know, were giving birth to the children in the 1960s. And that's, you know, when the hippie movement started and... You know, we've been going on a steadily, steadily decline from then on. And in the 80s, we had a Jesus movement. I got to witness that. That's when I was saved in the 80s. I was 12. But uh, it didn't last long. Because during the hippie movement, somewhere in the 70s was a big Jesus movement. And then that spread on into the 80s, and that's when you had the women starting to dress modestly again, baggy shirts and stuff like that. But they kept some of that worldly stuff. They believe like the teased hair and fancy hairstyles, and which is of course is not godly, but the outfits were more godly versus the super tight clothing and the halter tops and you know super tight pants and everything else of the 70s. And but so in the 90s, it started going right back. It got to real baggy clothes, the goth type stuff, and then it started going to more revealing. And I always wonder why women want to show their body off. And it's only sinful women that want to do this, but you see it in the churches still. Like, you know, they're always right there on the borderline 
of, oh, no, I'm covered up. Can't you see? And it's like, yeah, I see more than I should. Yeah, you are wearing you know, a dress, and it's kind of okay. But it's right there on the edge where it's like, you know, you're still dressing to impress people, not the Lord. And so you women out there, you have a very important role in keeping our society from, you know, turning whorish. Now, it seems like the men against their will, because modern women are just not worth marrying, they've started their own movement and having to walk this world alone and, you know, not to deal with it. But it's, you know, times are still getting rough. Times are getting hard. Crappy people are leaders. And the reason being is God is punishing the world. All modern societies, God's punishing them because they're not walking with him. They're walking against him and doing it their way. So, if you want to know why, now you know why. And... We have a lot of hypocrites today, too. It's getting really bad because a lot of people are hypocrites and they don't even know it because they don't read the word, uh, the word of God and they don't adhere to it. They just like to say, hey, I'm a Christian. And it's become just a, a saying now, not a lifestyle. It's just a saying so that people think they're good. This is why it's very, very important and crucial that we read God's word and study it. Hence the name of my channel being God's obedient servant. Because we are to be, if you are of the Lord, you are his servant. We do as he says, and we are to obey. And how do we know what to obey? It's in the word of God. That's why I do this. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump right on in here. Because almost 10 minutes went by of me talking. I want to keep these videos around, you know, 30 minutes. But some things, you know, they just need to be said, be reminded. You know, people got to hear these things. And your feelings are not important to me. You know, I am empathetic to a lot of things. But if you think your feelings are more important than the facts, that's why, you know, you're either part of the lost or at risk of you know, being in that area. Because when it comes to God's word, he's like, you know, God says, even if it costs you your life, you are to follow him. Can't get no more blunt than that. But Jesus also said it, pick up your cross and follow me, which, which means die to yourself and do as I say. Live how I command you to live. Go where I command you to go. It's a... You know, we know Jonah and the whale. You know, the story of that. You know, Jonah disobeyed God. So I'm not, I don't want to go there. I don't want to help those people. You know, God took him there anyways. Against his will. <laughs> He's like, my will will be done. Not yours, mine. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get jumped. Go ahead and jump right on in here. I'm already getting tongue tied here. But let's go ahead and start with uh, chapter 75. I said there's only, um, I think, 10 verses here, then 12, and I think uh, 20. So it's only like 10, I think, nine pages to read. So go ahead. And they're 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 very self-explanatory. They're very powerful, but self-explanatory at the same time. So I really enjoy these Psalms of Asaph. I said, you know, 77 is now my favorite one. Of course, it's got two sevens in the title. Seven's God's, you know, favorite number. And, you know, I know a bunch of you all are going to be dealing with the exact same things that 77 is. And the thing is, you know, this was thousands of years ago that they felt this way too. So, regardless of when the time is, people and conditions are always the same. God never changes. The problems in the world never changes. 
It's just that technology does. And a lot of times our technology will create more problems than they help. Especially when you got the internet today with all its distractions. So many. It's so so with the people like, I don't have time to read God's word. It you would if you'd put down the phone. You know, or if you got like me, I got the Bible on my phone. So it was like, you know, turn off the internet part and bring up the phone, you know, bring up the Bible app and read the Bible. You know, study the Bible. It's far more important than, you know, commenting on a cat video or something. Whatever. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started into this because I can be, before I know it, I'll be 40 minutes in and I ain't even, even read a word yet of God's word. But there's just so much stuff to be discussed. And it's so hard to do it, pack it into a 30 minute time frame. And that's why I kind of like to try to, you know, talk about things that the reading's going to be pertained to. But yeah, so let's get started in here. Chapter 75, verse 1. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly. And to the wicked, lift not up the horn. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture and he poureth out of the same, but the dredge thereof. All the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Now, if you wonder what the horns are, um, I don't know if anyone's seen the old movies and how they would show things where you had uh, um, the director would speak to this thing that looked like a cone. That was to amplify their voice. So in this, it's speaking of, you know, them saying their words louder and God's, you know, he'll cut off the wicked but the people that speak, you know, loudly of righteousness shall be exalted. So your horn is your mouth in this situation. But, yeah. That's a good, powerful one right there. And I like that psalm too. I like them all, of course. I like God's word. It's, uh, well, as I said, it's, it's, when you're clearly with the Lord and you have the Holy Spirit, God's word speaks to you. And the more you study it, the more it speaks to you and the louder it gets. And pretty soon, it's like me, a lot of times I know what God, God's word is. Anytime I have a problem or if I'm messing up in life, this, that, and the other, God's word comes to me and sometimes I'm like, you know, like don't, don't tell me that right now. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. It's like, because I, I know I'm wrong. And none of us want to feel we're wrong, but most of the time we are. You know, when it comes to, you know, not doing what we're supposed to be doing. But let's continue on. Okay, for some odd reason, that image was bigger. Sorry for that. Uh, somehow or another, I guess it got zoomed in. Don't know what happened there, but. Anyways, chapter 76. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. In Salem also 
is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield and the sword and the battle. Selah. Thou art more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The south hearted are spoiled. They have slept their sleep and none of the men of might have found their hands. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and horse are cast into a dead sleep. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still when God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth. Selah. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. Now, of course, princes and kings think they have a right to rule over people. God says if you know, his people are serving him, they do not need a leader because God is their leader. But yeah, rich people are always treating the poor, the meek, badly. That has never changed. But, and that's the end of chapter 76. And here comes the good one. Well, the good one tonight for me. Well, I said for many others, but I like this one a lot. So let's go ahead and get started in this one. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night, and cease not my soul. I'm sorry, and cease not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. I tell you right now, I'm not the only one that battles depression. And this is what this is talking about here. You know, we cry unto God, we have problems, we hurt on the inside, and God hears us. But, you know, it doesn't, uh, knowing that God hears us doesn't fix the problem. You know, our, 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 our peace inside refuses to be comforted. And God helps out with that, with his word, with his promises. But, you know, when you're in a bad situation, you know, severe loneliness and this, that, and the other, it uh, it's hard to be comforted. It's very hard for God's word to comfort you when you're lonely. I speak from experience. I live a lonely life. I live in solitude. Don't really make friends easy. Anybody, anybody I meet and stuff start talking about God's word and everything and they just don't really want to hear it. And guess what? Most of them call themselves Christians. But they don't want to hear God's word. Remember God says, know a tree by the fruit it bears. Sometimes you have to walk this world alone to follow God. But, yeah, being alone sucks. Having financial problems and being alone double sucks. You know, worrying about a place to live and reliable transportation and trying to get healthy food today. That's, you know, plus have all the other problems. Yeah, it sucks. God knows it does. But you got to remember, 
these hard times are upon us because the majority of this country is walking in the opposite direction and God must bring the people to their knees so that they start praying to God and turn away from their sinful ways, repent and turn back to the Lord. That's why these times happen. It ain't just to pick on you. It ain't to slap you around and be mean to you. It's, you know, it's there for a reason. And you may be following God, but sometimes you have to suffer with the rest of society. Like the teachings of God's word says, it rains on the just and unjust alike. So for you to receive blessings means the wicked will receive blessings too. And sometimes God says, you, you must endure so that I can get the, the, the lost back to us. And somebody that loves thy neighbor is one that says, yep, this is going to suck, but we got to do what we got to do. We got to deal with what we got to deal with. So pull that bandaid off and let's get to it, you know. <laughs> but let's continue on here. Verse 4. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Selah. And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. Now, this still pertains to us today. You say, well, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, you got to remember Jesus Christ is one of those sons. We are adopted in to Abraham through Christ. That's how the um, Samaritans, the, uh, I guess, Gentiles, whatever, you know, we're not Jewish but that's how we become part of God's chosen people is through adoption. That's what Christ is. He's our adopted heavenly father. All in the world, everybody in the world can join in. But even if you're Jewish, you still have to serve Christ. But you're already part of God's chosen people. <laughs> you know, but you still have to serve the Lord. None may come to the father but by me. You gotta remember that as well. So let's continue on. Seven, uh, 16. The waters saw thee, O God. The waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies sent out a sound. Thine arrows also went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lifted the world. The earth trembled and shook. Thy way is in the sea, and thy path is the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. Thou leddest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And that's the end of the lesson. I'm right here at the 30 minute mark according to the timer. And yeah, if, uh, 
As I said, 77, Psalm 77 is a very good one. If you're already a follower, follower of the Lord, that's a very good one. Because we've all dealt with problems and we're wondering, God, where are you? I'm feeling lost here, this, that, and the other. And it's like, you know, we have to turn back to the Word. He hasn't forgotten about us. It's just, you know, he's trying to save a lot of others as well. You got to remember, if you're not lost, you're part of the 99. He has to leave you to go after the one. And sometimes we got to walk in our own little circle and wait for him to get back. So he hasn't left you. He's just dealing with other things. And your job is to remember the scriptures and serve him and spread the gospel. We're to try to save more of the ones that are lost. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson here. And like always, remember to pray. I feel that people don't pray enough. You know, especially God's people. They don't pray what's important. Can you remember God says if you have food, clothing, and shelter, you are rich. And a lot of times you want more than the necessities. And Jesus commands us to live a humble life. You know, a meek life. We're to be happy with simple things. And it's kind of hard in today's world, especially if they're, you know, everybody's wanting the newest phone, the fastest computer, you know, a fancy laptop or, you know, and of course now you got 50 to $100,000 cars that ain't worth a hill of beans, but take it from a mechanic. Don't buy anything new. If you have to have something like that, only lease it. It ain't worth buying. You don't want to own it because you ain't going to never be able to afford to maintain it. These new things are designed to break. They're, they're, they're garbage. They're over-computerized, over-complicated, impossible to work on garbage. So let them fix their stuff and you just pay your rental fee. Find the cheapest thing you can and deal with that. You know, you Remember, we're not here to impress people on this earth. Our job as Christians is to spread the gospel and to teach other God's word. To share the word. Help bring others to the Lord. we got to plant that seed so God can bloom in, in their mind and heart and then save them. But if we don't commune with God in prayer, you know, we don't... Uh, it's harder to hear from the Lord when you don't know how he speaks. So, until next time, God bless, good night, and goodbye.